Alma and Blanca are playing a game where they roll a six-sided pair of dice and try to predict the outcomes. Blanca thinks that the probability of rolling a one and a five, probability of rolling a one and a five, is greater than the probability of rolling a one or a five. Alma disagrees. She thinks that the probability of rolling a one or a five is greater. Based on the sample space of possible outcomes listed below, who is correct, Alma or Blanca? Well, we could just look straight at the sample space and see how many of these outcomes satisfy each of these, each of these situations. So the probability of rolling a one and a five, so the probability of rolling a one and a five, well, look from this, from this grid here, we see that there are 36 equally likely outcomes. And how many of them involve rolling a one and a five? So this is a one and a five is this one. That's one and a five. And you also have, you also have a one and a five right over here. There's exactly two out of these 36 equally likely outcomes that involve a one and a five. So there is a one over 18 chance of this happening. Or you could say the probability is 1 18th. Now what's the probability of rolling a one or a five? Well, a one or a five, so probability of one or a five, well, all of these involve, all of these over here involve a one, my pen, it's digital pen, but it looks like it's running out of ink. Those all involve a one, and all of these involve a five. All of these involve a five, right over here. All over these involve a five. Those involve a five. And actually, actually we're not done yet. All we have all of these involving a one, right over here. And you have all of these involving a five. This was one for the first die, five for the first die. These are one for the second die, five for the second die. So how many total outcomes are there? Well, it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. So it's 20 out of the 36 equally likely outcomes. Or if we divide both the numerator and the, divide, the denominator by four, we get five over nines. Five ninths of the equally likely outcomes involve a one or a five. So clearly five ninths is larger than one eighteenth. Five ninths is the same thing as 10, 10 eighteenths. So the probability of a one or a five is greater. So Alma was right. Alma thinks that the probability of rolling a one or a five is greater. So who is, who is correct? Alma. Alma is correct. Now, it was good to go through this exercise of identifying the subset of our sample space that meets each of these situations, but you could have just thought about it as well, even if you didn't have the sample space in front of you. What Blanca was saying, the probability of, of a one and a five, you have to have a one and a five, that's a much more stringent constraint than a one or a five. A one or a five is going to include many, many more things. It's gonna include a two and a one, a three and a one. It's gonna include a five and a three, not just a five and a one. So just even, without even looking at this, without actually even having to calculate these probabilities, you could have said, look, what Alma is saying has a higher probability, it makes sense because she's placing a much looser constraint, a one or a five, not one and a five.